two, two, two things wrong with what you are about to see, courtesy of Big Eva, an evangelical publishing company, a Bible just for Gen Zers. As you see this translation intended to reach the youth, to teach them that the Word of God is super groovy, Daddy-O. See if you can spot two things that are wrong with this supposed Bible translation. Here we go. This verse says, De Uno, Cap G, Sandcastles, Big Sky, Little Rock. That would be Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Big G, cap G, that's, that's God. Whew. Sand castles, big sky, and little rock. Cool. Let's see if you can figure out this groovy verse. Since day uno, there was cap G. Big J was chilling with cap G, and big J was cap G. Can you read John 1, 1 in that? Probably not. You're too shocked from the blasphemy, calling God Cap G and Jesus Big J. Can you figure out what verse this is? Ironically, I used to be a noob. Now I'm not a noob. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted and reasoned like a child. How ironic we've devolved that glorious verse into this baby talk. What are the two problems with this new youth translation, which, to be fair, the publishing company pulled and apologized for? Problem number one, it demonstrates a shockingly low view of the Bible. It demonstrates that our understanding of God's inspired word is a malleable toy that we can play with to fashion it any way we need it to. Despite the protestations from the publishing company demanding that we all recognize they really do have a high view of the Bible, how this slipped through approval after approval after approval, and nobody inside of that publishing company said, oh, wait a second, um, we're talking about God's Word here. What is this? That is problem number one. But did you smell problem number two? How's about our understanding of the youth? Our opinion of kids these days, it can only be concluded if this publishing company's Gen Z translation is representative of evangelicalism's attitude toward the youth. We don't think they must be stupids. That is not the only product for youth groups that reveal our attitude toward kids is one of condescension. They can't think big thoughts. They can't hear big concepts. They can't study big words. And they certainly can't listen to a Bible study. Well, not a long one that doesn't involve whipped cream. In my opinion, this particular Bible is emblematic of so much of evangelical Christianity when it comes to catechizing our youth, if you can even call it that. Perhaps you remember the year when we used to have kids, you know, sit still with reverence as we open up the Word of God to memorize Bible verses, to ask questions like, who is God? Who is man? What is the chief end of man? And then the kids had to memorize it and they were quizzed on it. No way, man. Big G, cap, little J in the sandcastle in the sky rock. <laughs> hey, ain't the word of God cool? Sorry, the kids aren't stupid. And that is why we have put together a 13 episode TV series that also has a Bible study that does not treat the kids like morons. It respects them. It honors them just the way university students will be treated when they run off to college. Make no mistake about it, this is why we are losing so many of our youth. We treat them like dum-dums, like noobs.
to be cool. And then they ran off to university and a professor who probably doesn't wear skinny jeans and maybe even wears a sport coat treats them with respect, honor and dignity as if they can actually retain some information. And the kids, they're agog. They're simply agog. We treat kids like two year olds in youth group they get their driver's license, they drive away to university where a professor starts indoctrinating them with utter nonsense, but he does it in a respectful way. And guess what? We're losing our kiddos. Recently, an organization with apparently a lot of free time and a lot of extra money did a study these are models of projections of trends typically done in business or for retail, but this was done inside of the church. What's going to happen in a decade or two decades or three decades? What's going to happen to the church? Will it be growing? Will it be shrinking? 35 million evangelical youth, not the unchurched youth, 35 million evangelical church tr youth are projected to leave the faith by the year 2050. Why? Because Big Skyrock kept the G in the new thing. We would like to present to you Road Trip to Truth for youth and frankly for adults, treating them with respect, honoring their intelligence, and believing that they can actually deal with big ideas they will be hammered with when they run to university. Imagine a world where everyone interpreted traffic signs any way they wanted. It'd be complete chaos. And yet we're living in a world just like that. It says that we can interpret our own experiences and even what's right and wrong based on our own subjective standard. But what happens when we come to different conclusions? Is it okay? No harm, no foul? Or are we speeding towards a head-on collision? To figure that out, we have to ask one important question. What is truth? What is truth? It is... Truth. It doesn't exist, in my opinion. It's up to interpretation. It is... the truth. It's a hard one to define. Something very concrete. I'd say it's just, it's a fact. It's just the way things go. Truth is kind of this indefinable concept. It's what the majority defines as acceptable. asked a lot of people a question, what is truth? Few of them had the answer. Why do you think that is that few people have the answer to what truth is? Philosophers have been asking that question for all of human history. Dr. Nathan Buznitz is a PhD in historical theology with a focus on the earliest Christian authors. He knows his stuff. I think if we were to define truth in a really simple way, we would say the truth is reality. Truth is that which corresponds to reality, and to know the truth is to have information that accords with that which truly is. A lot of people said it's what I feel, or it's what I think is right. So who determines what truth is? You do. It's what you think. If you feel like that's your truth, you don't gotta prove it to be truthful to anybody else. Anything can be true, even alive. A good amount of people believe in it. Yeah, well, there's been a shift in Western culture even over the last hundred years or so towards a more relativistic mm -hmm. way of thinking about truth, that somehow truth is all relative and there is no absolute truth. Do you think a person can know if something is really true? No. No? Mm -mm. Do you believe in absolute truth? No. Do you believe that all truth is relative person to person? Yeah. In your experience, do people actually live consistently with that statement that all truth is relative? No, I don't think people live consistently with it. Uh, they use it as an excuse, especially when it comes to moral norms, because they want to live the way they want to live. Kids aren't noobs. They're intelligent. They're smart. They're thoughtful, and we need to start treating them as if we agree.
would like to encourage you to consider teaching Road Trip to Truth for your youth. It honors them, it respects them, it confronts them with bad ideologies, and it will encourage them. The Bible is indeed the inspired, infallible, inerrant, sufficient Word of God. Get that resource at wretched.org slash road trip. Bailiff. Please have the witness put the right hand on the Bible and administer the oath. Oh, the Bible, which actually says our yea should be yea and our nay should be nay. Does the defense have any more witnesses? Yeah, two of them <laughs> in Revelation 11.